Rodney Harrison from Football Night in America. He knows about winning Super Bowls and uh, also losing those. One of the uh, great free safeties in the history of the game. Rodney joining us now. Uh, your thoughts after watching that game? <laughs> My thoughts about that comment you just said. Well, I know. I, well, I'm just saying that you can give us perspective, you know, and that's what we want. We want, you know what, let me try that again. Let me try that again. And uh, joining us now is Rodney Harrison, who's won a couple of Super Bowls, and boy, could he play football. He was a heavy, hard hitter, football night in America analyst, one of the greats, Rodney Harrison. Hi, Rodney. <laughs> No, I don't like that. I like your honesty better, Dan. But, you know, you <laughs> talked about the Beach Bowl. And look at how, as a team, with so many bad players, like offensively, how could you not give T.O. a chance? I don't care if the guy's 38, 39 years old. He looked unbelievable. Well, wait a minute. Rodney, Rodney, it was a celebrity Beach Bowl where he's got a <laughs> five foot three actor covering him. I mean, Tom Arnold was covering him. Dan, it's, he still look good. And, I know. You know I'm, I'm, it's not like me and T.O. We're, we're best <laughs> friends or anything like that, but you got to give him props, man. The dude looked all right. Okay, would you rather have T.O. or Randy mm. Moss? Oh, um, I think I think mm, at this point in time, I still think Randy Moss is productive. Um, I know he's not a cancer in the locker room, none of those type of things. <laughs> um, probably Randy Moss because he, he hasn't set out I would at take, this point. I'd take T.O. See, are you saying that because you truly believe it, or are you saying that just to spite me? No, no. I, I'm, I'm always straight up with you. I, I would take T.O. T.O. needs – T.O., he should have a job in the National <laughs> Football League. I mean, it's, it's, I, regardless of what people say about his attitude, the guy can still play. He looks fantastic. He should have a job. All right. Uh, what, what are you taking away from this game? Man, you know, I, I just look at San Francisco and I was kind of disappointed because you get two weeks to prepare for a Super Bowl and to come out, you can really see the lack of experience. You can just see them. It, it's almost like they weren't prepared for the moment. And, I mean, I give them a lot of credit for coming back after, the, um, you know, everyone calls it the conspiracy theory. But, um, you know, I was just really disappointed to see the defense just allow the Ravens to go up and down the field and guys really that was making plays during the year, not really stepping up and making those type of plays they should make. Could you imagine if Belichick was in the Super Bowl and he was trailing at halftime and the power went out, the controversy, then there would be a conspiracy theory. Not with the brothers there, the Harbaugh's, but <laughs> had it been Belichick, somebody would have said, oh, do you think he paid somebody to pull the plug here? So everybody was calling me up and saying, hey, man, what is this? Is this about CBS? I'm afraid to lose their viewers at, you know, in the, after halftime or what, what is the situation like? I got the answers. I don't know. I, I guess the power just went out. <laughs> I really didn't think it was a conspiracy or anything no, like that. Sometimes no. things just happen, you know? Joe Flacco, and, and we've talked about it. I don't know if you've been sold on Flacco, but considering he's gone through luck, Peyton, Tom, and now Kaepernick, uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody who's taken on – more talented quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, you know what? And, you know, he's been okay during a regular season and just for some whatever reason it is, Dan, just, you know, during the playoffs, Super Bowl, he was he was really good. He made some plays. And, and the one thing I like about him, regardless of the regular season or the playoffs or even the Super Bowl, just the poise that he showed and really not the emotional up and high, up and downs. And, you know, I, I was really impressed with him, Dan, because I knew we talked earlier this year on the show about him, you know, whether he was the elite quarterback or not. But I, I think he proved a lot of people wrong, man, that the, the Ravens are going to have to pay him, you know, that he's going to be the franchise quarterback. They might as well lock him up because, I mean, man, he's the Super Bowl MVP. What can you say? Uh, good no call on the Jimmy Smith Crabtree play at the end of the game. No, it was garbage, man. You, you have to make the call. And to me, you know, the thing about it is, regardless of the, 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 the enormity of the moment, I still think you still have to make that call. He grabbed him. It was clearly a, whether it was a pass interference. It was, it was a call, man. You have to make that call. I mean, it was, it's just, you know, I know officials are afraid to be that guy to make that call, but you got to show some kahunas, man, and step up to make that call because – it was a legitimate call, and, and I think the rest blew it. And I respect you for saying that because you're a defensive back. And, you know, usually in that situation, you're probably saying, you know what, you, you, know, you, you can't make a call like that with the game on the line. But you're watching something that was blatant. And I don't believe in good no calls. It's like when you have somebody who pops somebody and then somebody retaliates and then you call a penalty on both guys. It's, it's kind of silly 
Somebody started it, you call a penalty. If somebody holding on the play, then call the penalty no matter when it is. Yeah, man, I just think that, you know, and, and those officials, it just seemed like, and even I think at one point in time, did I see like Kerry Williams push a, a, a yeah. official? It's like if you push an official, I don't care if it's, it's automatic, Bowl, if you're it's gone. Play, you got to kick them out. And that's the thing. I mean, I know you want to have diversity in this, you know, with the officials coming in and playing, you know, um, doing the Super Bowl, but you have to call it like it's a regular season game. Players are trying to play like it's a regular season game, and you can't just have that imbalance with the officials. He's Rodney Harrison from Football Night America joining us on the Dan Patrick Show. Colin Kaepernick. Um, I thought the enormity of the game got to him in the first half. And and I couldn't understand the play calling angle on this, Rodney, is I wouldn't have had him to throw as much as he was because he seemed like he was still a little nervous and rushing, uh, you know, that double clutching stuff. I would have had him run a little bit more, put pressure on the Ravens' defense. Uh, what surprised you about uh, Kaepernick last night, first half? Well, the same thing, Dan. Um, I just felt like the play calling wasn't really what it was. I felt like um, San Francisco kind of got outside themselves trying to pass the ball more. I know they got down, but even in the red zone, I felt like, you know, four straight passes that they should have run the ball and, and really tried some different things. They tried the same play on two different occasions, the little sprint out to the right-hand side, and he had nowhere to go. And, and I just felt like the coaches kind of lost their composure and really didn't put him in the best position to have success. And that's what happens. I mean, coaches get nervous, players get nervous because they're thinking, they're not thinking, that okay, this is just another game. They're thinking, okay, if we make this mistake or, you know, we're, we're trying to do something special or outside of ourselves to win a Super Bowl. And then you have to treat it like it's a regular season game and you can't change so many different things. And we saw that last night. Next uh, quarterback who needs a ring. Next quarterback that needs a ring? Yeah, because now we're, you know, now we put away the Eli elite. Yes, he is. Flacco elite. Yes. Now who's the next guy who we're going to say, are you an elite quarterback? Well, I think you, you, I think you have to almost look at maybe Tony Romo. I think you have to look at um, Matt Ryan. These are guys that have really, you know, solid talent around them. And really, if you want to get to the next level, you know, you're going to have to make, you're going to have to win a Super Bowl. And and I think those are the guys that now we're looking at. We saw Eli, you know, eventually Matthew Stafford. He's going to be mentioned in that if they, you know, get some help on defense. But these are some of the young guys, the up and coming guys, and even the expectations with RG3 and eventually, you know, Russell Wilson and Andrew Luck. The, these guys in the next two or three years, expectations will be up there where we expect these guys to, you know, to win a Super Bowl. I'll get you out on this one. I mentioned that you won Super Bowls, you lost them. And the reason why I bring that up is your perspective of what is the difference? I mean, that feeling of the day after a Super Bowl when you've won, the day after when you've lost. It sucks. It's the worst feeling in the world, man, I tell you, because, you know, you sit there and all you think about all night is, you know, this one play or that one play or that one missed tackle or that pass interference or that ball I could have knocked down. And it just stays with you. And I looked at my wife right after the game. And I said, you know, it's funny because you don't think about the two Super Bowls that you win, that you won. You think about the two that you lost. And then she said, yeah, the only thing that I'm thinking about now is how the Giants beat us. And, and, that's, and that's what you think about the entire offseason. And people say, well, it'll fuel you, it'll drive you. But it really makes you sad because this, is, this could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Now, everyone's looking at San Francisco saying, oh, they have much, so much talent, they're going to be good for a long time. But what happens if Colin Kaepernick tears his ACL in the third week of the season? Their season might be completely gone. And once you have a team, you're never going to have the same team. You're always going to have free agents. You're going to have some coming in, some um, some um, leaving. But it, it's it's just that that kind of feel, Dan. It's just you just it's it's like you're sick because you know you had an opportunity to win a football game and you lost it. Good to talk to you as always, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, Dan. Take care. Thank I'm you. Man. Rodney Harrison, Football Night in America. Won two Super Bowls, lost two. And, you know, those are the that hang with you. You know, when it's the last second, last drive, play here, play there. And I promise you that those Niners are going to be, when they look at that game film, they're going to look and say, how did we not win this game?